Okay, here's a close-up of the area that uh, I want to show you. So you'll see over here, my plate has been pulled out. And you really, and I'm, I'm just pushing it with a stick here, you can do it with your finger. This is what you need to pull over to the, to the left-hand side to be able to pull the plate out completely. So that's to pull out the plate completely, but that's not what we want to do right now. Right now we want to wind the bobbin. So I bring it back, bring the plate back, uh, and I'll show you. How it's aligned. Just one second. See it's aligned now, arrow to arrow. When I was showing you before I was pulling it out and pulling this black piece over. I'll pull it over with a finger and that allows the plate to come out completely, this piece right here. Okay, so to wind the bobbin you line it up like that and then the next thing you need to do of course is you need to have thread in your needle. Uh, and you need to have a bobbin inside as well. The bobbin I have in there right now has some red thread in it. Uh, the needle in my the thread in my needle is actually green. So that's how I'm going to show you that it actually the winding does actually work. Okay, and I, of course you'll also see that it's connected. So I'm going to just pause for a second and get us started here. Okay, so I have my um, bobbin right here. As you can see, it has some red thread in it. I'm just going to slip it into place, and that's all you do. And then the next thing you do is you slide your plate so that the two triangles meet each other. Uh, don't worry about this thread. It should just, it'll disappear after a while. Hold your plate down a little bit, especially if it's defective like mine. Uh, it never hurts. And then you just pull your thread to the side, and you can, you can actually start just by putting it in like this, but because I'm holding my plate down, you can actually start by turning the wheel. Or you can just start directly. Right now I could feel it catch. Or you could start, and now you can, if you, if you like, you can start directly with your pedal. Uh, it is nice to let it catch first. That way you know it's caught in the right place. Some people also have difficulty with the thread uh, winding underneath the bobbin, which is a real problem because it's a real mess. Uh, to clean up and to take out carefully so you don't do damage to your machine. Uh, so it is good to turn the hand wheel once towards you and feel that it's caught. It's now caught. So what I will do now is I will just simply press on my pedal. Okay, I'll stop right there. So did you see what happened? I kept my finger on the thread. It will eventually just cut itself off if you hold on to it. Uh, some people prefer to cut it, but I just hold on to it. So now what I've done is I've turned my crank, I've cranked my wheel forward and pulled my thread out. I can, at this point, I can already close my door, but I usually just like to pull the two threads out together. There you go. They've both come out together and I close. And now I'm ready to sew. You want to make sure you cut these two ends, of course, so that uh, they're not connected. There we go. In these older mechanical machines, it's good to leave yourself a longer thread tail. And now you're ready to sew. So here we go. I've put a sample cloth here. It's not very good quality fabric, which is a good way of showing you how well the machine sews. I'm on straight stitch. The um, tension is automatic, but you can adjust it if you if you need to. I'm on about uh, 2.5 stitch length, and I'm just going to show you. And I, like I said, I have to hold my plate down, unfortunately. But oh, whoops, you see what happened there? Okay, so I'm going to pause this. My thread tail was not long enough. That was the problem. Uh, I have other machines that are newer where a short thread tail works just fine. Okay, I've rethreaded the machine and I'm going to start sewing now. It should disappear in here. You can also cut it if you like at this point and just sew. It's a great machine. I'll show you the stitch. In one second, there's the stitch. It's uh, this one right here that you're looking at. And it does many other stitches. Uh, to the side here, I think you'll see the herringbone stitch, which you can also do. Uh, for some of the stitches, especially the decorative stitches like this, you uh, may want to um, lower the upper tension. Uh, I don't find it's necessary with this machine. For the satin stitches, where a lot of thread has to accumulate under the presser foot, there is a clear uh, view presser foot that comes with the machine, which works a little bit better because it, it, it doesn't uh, compress the thread too much. So next I want to show you what happens if your machine stops um, 
uh, if, the th if the bobbin threading has stopped working and if you somehow do what I did which take it all apart and you don't know how to put it back together again okay so stay stay tuned here we go I hope you can see that uh, the lighting might be too bright let's try no that that might be easier to see I'm not sure so here's the bobbin area and here is what I would call the critical piece I'm going to turn the light on so you can see this piece well. In the center there's a screw, then on top of that there is a basically a black, uh, just a, a black piece with a little notch in it. So make sure the notch is there. And if you do take it apart like I did, this notch right here has to be right there and you'll see it. And under, below that there's a spring. Well, I don't want to play with the spring, leave it alone. Don't worry if the spring is not uh, very tightly wound. In fact, it shouldn't be. The whole purpose of the spring is simply to allow this to happen, which you're seeing there. The spring allows the lower piece to come out and go back in. And the only reason you do that is so that when you take your slide plate out, so this piece here is what holds the slide plate in. When I push this forward, this gets out of the way and then the slide plate can come out. And you'll see that if you look underneath the slide plate, that makes absolute sense. The important thing is this long notch, whatever you want to call it, long tooth protrusion, whatever, that has to be there for the machine to be working, uh, to be winding your bobbin properly. So what happens is when you take your slide plate out and you match the two triangles, this turns a little bit, you see. That'll probably turn to about there. And that's just enough that the thread will get uh, be in the right place, in, in, a, in other words, get inside here and wind your bobbin, you see. So right now, there's nothing happening and as this moves out the thread's able to get in and wind your bobbin. So I want to show you that uh, once again. Um, so let's wind the bobbin again. Okay so here's my bobbin. There's the bobbin. Okay put it in put your plate it won't go in until I turn this of course like I said it'll go in now in I always like to bring it all the way in and then slide it out and then like I said you hold on to this uh, because I'm holding my plate I've got to use a lot of fingers I would turn the hand wheel one time if it looks like it's caught it's work gonna work for you and then just press 